So good afternoon everybody and welcome back to um, Norwich and the Norfolk Broads. I'm, I'm going to do a painting today. Some of you have probably seen this before. I'm, I wasn't going to do it but I'm going to do it because it's a commission for a customer. I thought it'd be nice if they could have it and then obviously you know they can keep it and they can see it being created and done. Um, and then I always think to myself well I won't do a video uh, because people have seen this before. Uh, I put it on Facebook and then the first question that comes up is, uh, oh, did you do a video? So I'm going to do a video. If you've seen it before, I'm sorry. Um, it's one of them things. Um, it's more for the behalf of the customer, really. Um, but also I like people to see the paintings being created and I'm sure some of you will be interested. So um, we'll give it a crack. Um, so here we go. So it's 32 by 12. Um, it's a white top and a black base which obviously is one of the things I do quite a lot of. Um, I laid the white down first and poured it around then I laid the black down um, poured them till they met and then touched it up with the bottles just so I could get a, an edge which is fairly similar. Um, as I'm saying that I can see a little bit there. So the colours I'm going to use today are um, turquoise, magenta, two shades of blue, a dark and a light, um, plum purple and then one of the colours that um, the customer asked for is um, a lime green so I've got my shock and lime green which we'll use. Um, I've got a gold which I'm going to put in there. I've got um, a David's grey because I quite like this and I think it will work with the paint and um, the customer wanted some metallic so I've got the gold in there. I've got this which is fairly gives it a feel of that sort and then I've got uh, a sleek, sleek grey and possibly if I can find it I've got a touch of copper. So quite a lot of colours, um, but obviously they'll go down in, in you know whichever routes we put them. So I'll start off with the plum purple. And turquoise. I think it's always difficult when um, people ask you to do a similar sort of painting or one that they've seen and liked because a lot of you that do this will realise that it's really in the hand of the gods. Um, you can do a lot to control it um, by putting the colours down but then obviously when you start to push it or blow on it or use a straw um, it kind of goes in its own way and it, I think that's then is the skill of what you want to do with it. Um, and how you want to control it, where you want to blow it and just work with what happens really. So although you can get fairly similar, you probably won't get the same effect again. Um, and then a bit yellow. Like so. And what I'll do, I didn't do this last time, but at this stage I'll just put some gold down certain areas and maybe which of copper these uh, when I did the swipes the other week the copper and the gold um, they work really really nice and gave some nice effects with the purple plum purple I think it was um, so that's that um, I will use orange at some point but just just a little bit and like anybody that's watched my videos before 
I won't put the orange in now because it'll go muddied and give a, a mud effect or a brown effect. Um, so once I've blown it out, I'll then go back and put the orange in, if I remember, but I will. Um, so that's that, that's the start of it. I think with this one, if I remember rightly, what I did is obviously blow it along, blow it out. Um, what I liked about the last one was quite a nice little magenta flower that I put here, which pushed back in, which looked quite nice. So I'll try and do that as well. So that's it. Um, and just to remind people who may not have seen or who have watched this before, um, when I do this, there's two ways I do it. If I do it from the white side and push it out, it keeps the colour. Or if I want to go in at the bottom and push the black through it. It gives quite a nice black effect. So that's quite nice. Um, it's got quite a lot of the green coming through which we wanted and then go back in and put some colours in.
I think everybody will do this different and do it their own way um, and I think it's all about creating the shapes that you like and once you get something that you can push and maybe get a bit of definition like back in here what I would say um, I know it's a lot of people have tried this technique or tried to do these paintings and a lot have done really well and a lot have, have struggled with the consistency. I would say to you that if you're going to do this, and this isn't me just boosting up my videos, but if you're going to try this and do this, you really need to watch the consistency video um, that I created, I think the second one in, which shows you the consistency of the paint that I use, because the consistency of the actual paint in the paintings is quite crucial to how the painting will turn out. And I think a lot of you have found that out, because um, if it's too thin, it won't hold the shapes. If it's too thick it won't push the shapes and it's getting that balance and I use two parts Floetrol, one part acrylic paint and I use Arteza and what just over one part of um, distilled water which gives you the consistency. I then obviously strain that, mix it uh, and then I'll add a bit more water if I think I need to at the end just to get that right consistency of the paint. Um, and when you lay it down, it needs to be probably thicker than the Dutch pour, which obviously would give you the thickness for the paint to actually hold the shapes. Um, and that's what I try to go for. Um, it's quite difficult in the video that I did because I think, you know, everybody, I think it's try it, do it, and then experience it. Because the more you do it, the more you'll get the shape and the more you'll get the paint consistency. And I think it's like anything with these styles of paintings, each one has its own consistency, each one has its own thickness or thinness. Um, and if you want to do this, um, there's no point doing it with you know a thin pour or a pour that you think is, is right. I think you need to really look at it um, and get the, the consistency video and watch it and see how it's done. Uh, it may work for you, it may not. I think it's like anything with these sort of things. You either get the knack to get the, the colours that you want. Um, this wouldn't be any good to use pre-mixed paints um, I use pre-mixed paints for a swipe and I find them quite thin and I don't think it would work for this so it is really all down to getting the right consistency and the right measurements that you want for the painting. Here ended the lecture by Don Gregor. Um, what I would say is I really love when people do the paintings and send them to me um, it's really nice to see people are actually you know, having a go at something. And it's nice to see what people come up with. Somebody sent me a picture the other day and it was something I hadn't thought about. And they'd done um, a black base and then they put the blue across the top. And when they did this and they used the right colours, it looked like an under, underwater scene. And it was really nice. And I thought, oh, that's nice. So I might try that at some, some stage. So that's good. Another tip with these as well, once I do them, I'll probably leave it for about an hour and then I'll come back because sometimes the paint will have come back in on itself. So at various points through the night, I'll come back and then I'll just blow the shapes back out again until it gets to that stage where it dries in the shapes that I want.
and then just a couple of drops of orange in. Like I said with the orange, always put it in at the last, just to stop that effect of it going dull or muddy. I think I think that is about that for this one. Let me just um, blow a torch. And that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, what I'll do is I'll take the um, camera down and show you around. If it cuts off in the process, you know what's happened. It's really tricky to actually pull it off the tripod, so if it does happen, I do apologise. So.